it's the end of October and things have slowed down enough that I can spend some time doing a survey of the chestnut trees to make sure that none of them have the blight. The first to be checked is the fastest growing chestnut tree I've ever had and it's hard to believe that it's only a year old. It's in great condition and there's no blight to be found. But because it has grown so remarkably quickly, I had to use extraordinary measures to protect it from the deer. So I hung very heavy galvanized mesh around the tree and unfortunately because of wind and other factors there was some abrasion and the skin of the tree was damaged and so where the damage happened looks very ugly but there is no blight and I am very confident that it will completely heal. This tree is very encouraging to see. Unfortunately one of the trees does look a little suspicious and it's suffering from a similar abrasion on the side of the stem between two branches and both of the branches in their crooks look a little suspicious to me but higher up the stem it looks very healthy so I will remain vigilant and hopefully this tree will recover nicely. In the heart of the forest is a solitary juvenile chestnut tree that succumbed to the blight many years ago but it is sending up suckers and has been for a few years now and you can see that the leaves on these rather large suckers are completely brown unlike all of the offspring from the Miracle Sisters chestnut that still have beautiful vibrant green leaves. Taking a closer look at the suckers we can see that the blight has been ravaging them. Even the smaller suckers are quite clearly succumbing to the blight. Even the smallest of them has damage. This shows that when the parent tree succumbs to the blight at a young age that it does not have any tools yet that it can pass on genetically to the suckers to help them fight the blight. This tiny sucker that just sprouted this summer has no sign of the blight but it is so young and so small. We can see that the one and only green leaf that it still had was eaten by the deer. It's time to take out the shears and start removing every sucker that has the blight. And now I'm going to take down the remains of the tree since it has decomposed so badly that it's only now acting as a source of the blight. In the end, only one tiny sucker remains. Let's see how it does in the coming years and hope that it won't succumb to the blight. But if it does, there is still a chance that many years from now, a new sucker will emerge. It's important to keep a small area clear around this tree so that any future growth can be encouraged by the sunshine. And now we come at last to the remains of the grandmother chestnut tree and we can see a profusion of suckers. Looking closer we can see that she had produced a large sucker many years ago that was not much smaller than the tree that I just cut down. But we are here to look at the new suckers since she was cut to see how they're doing.
but unfortunately many of them have the blight as well. So it's time to start cutting the blight infected suckers. Very close inspection is required because we don't want to miss any that have succumbed to the blight. We only want ones that show any kind of defense against the blight. After I'm finished removing all of the infected ones, what we see remaining are primarily quite young and skinny ones. But if you look to the far left, there is one that's a larger size that had no blight. So all hope is not yet lost. But the greatest hope lies just a few steps away where we can see the root sprout doing very well. We still have to wait probably another year to get any kind of indication of blight, but so far this is looking very hopeful because unlike suckers, a root sprout is a new genetic beginning and a chance for further adaptation to the blight.